Okay, today we will hold uh, hearings and there will be signings for intro uh, 1321C to require a prevailing wage for building service employees and intros 906A, 909B, 1559A and 1580A to transform Hart Island. We'll begin with the hearing and signing for intro 1321C, and this expands prevailing wage requirements for building service employees of city-funded affordable housing projects. I want to commend everyone who worked on this. A lot of work went into it to get it right. Uh, there was a real spirit of uh, understanding the balance of protecting and supporting affordable housing for working people and good wages for working people. And there was a real sense in this discussion with the council, with our colleagues in labor, uh, everyone saw the same bigger goals and worked together to strike the right balance. And I want to thank everyone involved for that. It is a, a really a good example of doing something that will change and improve the lives of working people at the same time allow us to keep building on the central goal of making this a city that working people can afford. And we are committed to our long-term vision on affordable housing and appreciate how much uh, our colleagues in labor uh, and the unions involved here but also beyond have been supportive throughout of our larger goals on affordable housing. I want to thank Speaker Corey Johnson, Council Member Danique Miller, Chair of the Committee on Civil Service and Labor, and HPD Commissioner Louise Kerr. Thank you so much. And now I want to introduce the sponsor of intro 1321C. Uh, he has been a champion of uh, prevailing wage efforts in his own district, and again, ensuring that balance uh, be struck of all the different pieces that we need to elevate working people. Uh, so thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your hard work on this. My pleasure to introduce Council Member Rafael Espinal. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, good morning, everyone. I think we're all aware that my district is facing a housing crisis just like the rest of the city. And we believe that this crisis has to be addressed not just by looking at how much affordable housing is being built, but by examining what kind of jobs are being created as well. Uh, during the East New York rezoning, we struck this balance by building 100% affordable housing and ensuring that all of the building workers will be paid a prevailing wage. If we can do it in East New York, we can do it citywide. Good jobs should be the cornerstone of our strategy as we look to make New York City a place where working families can thrive. And I want to thank the mayor for not only sharing this vision, but also delivering it on it as well. This legislation is the accumulation of a lot of hard work from a wide range of stakeholders, especially the president of 32BJ, Cal Bragg, and his team, who have done a lot of work to raise the voices of the workers affected. In our public hearings, we heard testimonials from the workers that painted a picture of vast inequity in the jobs being created. While working to serve low-income New Yorkers, these porters and supers were themselves facing financial struggles. We can, we can provide dignity, respect, and fair compensation for workers at the same time, ensuring that we continue to grow our affordable housing market. I'd like to thank the Chair of the Civil Service and Labor Committee, Danique Miller, committee staff Malcolm Bluthorn, Michelle Lee, Andrea Vasquez, and the strong advocates from 32BJ and affordable housing operators as well who have been uh, strong uh, supporters of this bill, but also working with us to strike the right balance to ensure that we're building good affordable housing and also good paying jobs. Thank you. Thank you very much, Council Member, and thank you for working with us on this and so many other important initiatives. I also want to say, uh, I'm remembering some of the times we worked together on other issues, including uh, nightlife, and uh, you always come to these gatherings in a very stylish fashion. I, I, can see, I can see the council member's socks. You all cannot right now. But before this proceeding's over, you have to show the world your socks. All right, we, will, really, we will. Thank you. You are setting a new trend here. OK, we have uh, one individual signed up for public testimony. And I want to thank him as he comes up, Kyle Bragg, president of 32BJ, SEIU, right there to the microphone. Uh, Kyle, I want to uh, thank you uh, for your leadership. Um, you have uh, stepped into leadership of the union, obviously, at a very, very challenging time. And I, I want to say uh, our hearts, everyone's hearts, are with you and with the union, everything you've been through uh, in this year. But thank you for your leadership. And, and I want to thank you because you put a lot of time personally into this over the course of this year, and particularly last weeks of us working together on it. Uh, made a huge difference to get us to a great outcome. So thank you and welcome your testimony. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilman Espinal, Commissioner. Um, today is a momentous day for working people and communities to support in, the, in our city. Uh, the legislation provides a serious commitment to creating good jobs and affordable housing in our city, family sustaining jobs, um, jobs that allow us to attack the crisis for good jobs and affordable housing that this city has been, has been struggling with. It ensures that all New Yorkers can begin benefiting from investments in affordable housing, including working people and working families. To get this bill passed, 32BJ members have lobbied our elected officials, told their stories on how prevailing wage has made a big difference in their life and allowed them to provide for their families and themselves living in a city that is so difficult sometimes to do so uh, with the rising cost uh, of, of, of living here and raising a family here. The men and women who get this bill passed were commercial members, or commercial members like Yenny Hernandez, who bravely told a story of how prevailing wage and union jobs saved her and her son from homelessness. Uh, they, also, they were residential members like Richie uh, Iorio, who came out about a dozen lobby days to tell the story of how prevailing wage with health insurance has actually saved his life. And this bill is the perfect example of the ways that working people can come together together with elected officials who are truly dedicated to making life better for all New Yorkers. A major thank you goes out to Mayor de Blasio for his work, and he was right. We worked tirelessly to make sure that we got this bill right, the right balance to continue to provide affordable housing for the city as we, and should not suffer creating good jobs at the same time. Speaker Johnson and Councilmember Espinal for their tireless work also in helping us get to that point that we are able to build more affordable housing for the city, which it desperately needs, but at the same time, again, creating good family sustaining jobs uh, for the people who work in this, in this live, work and live in this city. It will allow people who are doormen, porters, security officers, concierge, handy persons to afford uh, to live and work in this city and will be able to call New York City their home, pay their bills, and also raise a family. Uh, as I said earlier, it's becoming more and more difficult to do as escalating costs uh, continue to rise in a major metropolis like New York City. So again, I want to thank everyone who played a role in this, our member leaders who have tirelessly lobbied in favor of this bill. I want to thank um, Councilman uh, Danique Miller, and particularly our HPD commissioner for their constant work in helping us figure this out and get to a place that, uh, that, that allows us to continue to address the homeless and uh, need for affordable housing, but also at the same time create good family-sustaining jobs. Thank you very much. Thank you. Kyle, come on back here, and anyone else who wants to join us uh, behind the desk here as we get ready to sign. I'm going to say a few words in Spanish to summarize before we sign. Anyone want to come up? Come on up. Don't be shy. I have never met a shy 32BJ member. This is a, a say. I, I want you to check their IDs if they are shy. Are they really 32BJ, you know? As everyone's assembling, just a few words in Spanish. Okay, everyone, come on. We can do this. We can do this. <laughs> All right. Let me just do a few words in Spanish, summarizing very briefly what we've talked about so far. Lo que firmamos hoy amplia el salario para empleados de administración de edificios. Le estaremos más seguridad a los empleados que hacen lo mismo para nosotros cada día. And now I will sign this legislation. Side for a second. There we go. Two trays it is. Council member. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank well you. done. Thank well done. Well done, brother. Good job. Thank you, sir. Well done. Thank you, sir. Okay. Julie, well done, brother. Good job. Good job.
Giving, giving them out to the shy members now. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner, help me out and pass some back, will you? Council member, you need any extras? Sure, I'll take one. There you go. Kyle, send some around, would you? Thank you so much. We're down to three. We got enough or we need any more? We can indeed. Paul, tell me I'm down to two. Anyone else need one? How many need one? Two more? That's perfect. You sure? Uh, just two? If we need more, we can do more. I can, I can, I can stretch it out. One, two. Three. All right, now I got one more. Are we good? That's gonna, anyone else? Anyone else? Last call. We're good. Here we go. And now, this bill is law. Yeah. Woo! 32 BJ! 32 BJ! 32 BJ! Good job. <laughs> one last one. Well done. Well done, brother.
Okay. Now going to continue with the hearing on the signing for a package of bills that really uh, rethinks, reconceptualizes the way that Heart Island operates. And I know for a lot of people here today, this has been um, a real deep, deep concern, uh, um, deep moral concern. A lot of folks for years have said this is something that uh, the city of New York had to approach in a very different manner. I want to thank everyone uh, who have been voices of conscience because we're at a point now where we're going to do things very differently and uh, it came from real earnest voices who raised concerns and, and I thank you for that. The bills before us today, intro 906A, which transfers control of Hart Island from Department of Corrections to Department of Parks. Intro 909B, which requires Department of Transportation to produce a public transportation plan for visits to Heart Island. Intro 1580A, which requires Department of Social Services to hold a public hearing on public burial. And Intro 1559A, which establishes the Department of Social Services Office of Burial Services. Now, the folks who have been buried on Heart Island over generations, they are New Yorkers. They are part of the fabric of our life. And I think it's um, a reminder to us all, there are so many people who built this city, who made this city great, whose names we will never know. And that's a sad reality, but does not take away their personhood. It does not take away their place in history. It doesn't take away who they were as human beings. Uh, these are people who were part of the fabric of this city. And they were loved by people in their lives and they loved others and if they ended up in a situation where um, their final resting place was Hart Island, that is, that is not a comment on who they were and the fiber of their being, it's a comment on the inequalities of our society and the reality that so many people could not get the health care they needed or the opportunity they needed. Before you, what has happened in the case today is something that I do not think we have ever seen before. A president who has doubled down on violating his oath to faithfully execute the laws and to protect and defend the Constitution. The evidence reveals a president who used the powers of his office to demand that a foreign government participate in undermining a competing candidate for the presidency. As President John Kennedy declared, the right to vote in a free American election is the most powerful and precious right in the world. But our elections become less free when they are distorted by foreign interference. What happened in two well, uh, New York City will not accept injustice in life or in death. It's important to recognize uh, injustice was done to so many and we will not let that be uh, the way the story ends. I want to thank everyone at the Department of Corrections. For a long time, uh, they dealt with a very challenging situation, but they did it solemnly and they did it with respect. But that chapter of the Department of Corrections uh, running Heart Island will close today with the signing of these pieces of legislation. And we will start a transformation. I want to thank Speaker Corey Johnson. I know he felt passionately that this was something important to act on, so thank him for his leadership. I want to thank uh, Councilmember Diana Ayala, sponsor of Intro 1559A. I want to thank HRA and I should say Social Services Commissioner uh, Steve Banks. Uh, thank you. I know you have worked hard and your teams work hard to address these issues and I appreciate it. Uh, thank you to Parks Commissioner Mitch Silver, DOT Commissioner Polly Trottenberg, uh, Correction Commissioner Cynthia Brand. Everyone has been working together on this. And now to our colleagues from the City Council who are present, again, with deep appreciation that you all put real heart into this issue, to forgive the uh, play on words there, but you all really cared and you all worked on this uh, with great sincerity. And I want to start with Councilmember Adonis Rodriguez, sponsor of Intro 906A and Intro 909B, and of course, Chair of the Committee on Transportation. Uh, he has been very focused on bringing fairness to this reality, and council member, appreciate all your good work and welcome your comments. Well, Mr. Mayor, I have said before, and, and I would say when I have any opportunity to be close to you that, you know, if the city of New York is not able to make all the changes that we can do under your administration, 
uh, it's difficult to expect, you know, what other biggest change we can do. Because, you know, I will assume that it's, it's tough job to be the leader of the city that you have to deal with a lot of a strong opinion. Everyone had a solution to every problem. But I know that in the time that you have left to serve as a mayor of the city, not only we had the opportunity, the privilege to work with something, to make possible what we've been saying that it has been impossible. Amen. And other things that we have in front of us for the next couple of months. You know, this is one of those areas that we can say we should ask for forgiveness. We should say I'm sorry to the more than one million New Yorkers buried in the largest public cemetery in the whole nation that up to 2014, even with the regulation and the way of how correctioners try to do the job following their mandate, up to 2014, family members, they were not allowed to visit that site. And for me, this is one of the many areas where we have to realize and understand that we live in a segregated society. I know that that was a mandate. I know that you've been working so hard to close that gap. But the more than one million individuals buried in the largest public cemetery that I started working since 1869, they were the black that unfortunately white people didn't want to be very close to. They were the poorest New Yorkers. They were the immigrants. They were those individuals that they died because of HIV. So here we are, you know, in a big day. You know, this is about the family of those one million body buried in that location. Family that probably they live in Alaska, they live in California, they live in Texas, you know, and they find out that there's someone buried in that island. Here we are saying we are ready, as you will be giving the honor to sign this bill, to say we are transferred this public cemetery to park. And we hope again that on the park responsibility and with the work that DOT will do also to put together a transportation plan, everyone, New Yorkers and the visitors, they should be able to connect with the history, the story of the black soldiers that they were buried in that area, in that location, with the poorest New Yorkers, with the immigrants. So, para mí es un honor, dale la gracia al alcalde, es un día histórico donde estamos haciendo historia, dándole respeto y dignidad al cementerio público más grande de los Estados Unidos de Norteamérica, que hasta este momento ha estado cerrado o muy limitado. So, con el día de hoy le damos la gracia al alcalde, a nuestro colega, el Speaker Johnson, Melinda from the Heart Island Foundation, they do a great job, y juntos vamos a decirle a la ciudad de Nueva York que no nos vamos a quedar atrás, que estamos haciendo justicia. Thank you very much, Council Member. I now want to turn to the sponsor of Intro 1580A, uh, who has been working uh, with great uh, feeling and, and commitment with this administration to make thoughtful changes uh, for the future of Hart Island. My pleasure to introduce Council Member Debbie Rose. Good morning, Mr. Mayor um, and everyone. I want to thank you for um, getting us to this day where we're gonna make a transformation of Heart Island and um, ensure that every New Yorker is buried in dignity. So I wanna thank you because many of us who have had the sad experience of visiting a deceased loved one recognize that visiting a deceased loved one at a cemetery is a very personal moment, a moment of prayer, reflection, and reminiscing. But if you're visiting one of the one million New Yorkers who are buried at Hart Island, the process could not be any more impersonal. In order to pay your respects to a loved one, you have to schedule an appointment. You have to schedule your grieving according to the Department of Corrections timetable and at the convenience of others, and at a common space with other mourners. This is not dignity. This is not compassion. This does not reflect who we are 
or the lives that are buried there, or the respect that they deserve, or who we as New Yorkers strive to be. As New Yorkers, we can, and today we will do better. My bill, Intro 1580A, develops a roadmap for the transformation of Heart Island and for a more dignified process. This bill requires that the Department of Social Services will convene a public hearing with all of the relevant stakeholders and the general public. This is really important that all of the stakeholders come together to form this plan. And they will review a burial assistance program, cremation alternatives, how New York City communicates with the next of kin, and the feasibility of a public burial site somewhere other than Hart Island. And these are just a few of the issues that will be addressed. The Department of Social Services will submit recommendations to the mayor and the New York City Council, and we can take the next step toward ensuring that all New Yorkers are buried in a more dignified and compassionate public burial protocol. I would like to thank Speaker Corey Johnson for his advocacy and his compassion and leadership on this issue, along with my colleagues who um, put together a comprehensive bill that will ensure that everyone receives a decent burial. And to Mayor de Blasio, I want to thank you for recognizing that it's long time that we recognize and honor those who have gone before us and who are buried at Heart Island. I want to thank you for helping us to transform Heart Island and for signing this bill into law today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. And you don't want to hear my Spanish interpretation. <laughs> thank you. The thought that counts. Thank you. Uh, finally, I want us to hear from the chair of the Committee on Parks and Recreation. Uh, and as chair of this committee, um, really has played an important role in bringing these bills to reality and thank him for his hard work. Council Member Peter Koo. Is the lights working? It's, there, it's on either way, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, you are truly the uh, number one public servant in the city of New York. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the city of New York is looking to finally pay its respect to those interred in our largest burial ground at Hart Island. By transferring control to the Parks Department, we will give access to the families of the disease and pull back Island's veil of secrecy that has existed for far too long. Thank you to all the advocates, council members, Rodriguez, Rose, Ayala, and our speaker, and of course the mayor, for coming together to right this generational wrong. As chair of the past committee, I look forward to work with all parties involved to make sure we have a really smooth transition. Thank you. Thank you very much, council member. We have three individuals signed up for public testimony. I'd like them all to come up to the microphone there to the left. Melinda Hunt, Elaine Joseph, and Herbert, and I assume it's Sweet? Sweat, I'm sorry, Sweat. Please. Thank you, Mayor de Blasio. And thank you to Speaker Johnson, Council Members Levine, Rodriguez, IAO, and Rose for sponsoring this legislation and inviting me here today. For many years, I have worked to end penal control of Hart Island, and today we are here to make sure that generations of New Yorkers know that their lives matter. All New Yorkers are part of the fabric of this city and their bodies will now be respectfully buried by an agency other than the Department of Correction. I can imagine that in 1933, 
when President Roosevelt ordered the National Park Service to take over managing the national cemeteries, that this might have been unpopular inside the Forest Service. Similarly, Hart Island is an active cemetery that the Parks Department doesn't want to take on as part of their service. Mayor de Blasio, it's so important that we keep Hart Island open to bury future generations. There is plenty of burial space if the land is managed correctly. The system of burials on Hart Island is tied to the Civil War, and all national cemeteries are managed by the Park Service. Every family tomb is a common grave. Many families have people who don't get along, but state law requires that cemeteries accommodate all members of a family. Hart Island is New York City's family tomb. We live out our lives in close proximity to our neighbors, and we are buried inches apart. Many New Yorkers can't afford a private burial or a funeral director, to or even to have a cremation. Future generations are also going to want their loved ones to be buried somewhere within the five boroughs, and they will cherish the parkland of Hart Island. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Elaine Joseph, and I never thought this day would come, ever. Uh, I first and foremost want to publicly thank Melinda Hunt, because if not for her, we would all not be here today. She took this on as her job, her lifetime wish, and uh, it's come true. Uh, my daughter was buried there in 1978, and uh, she was lost in the system. She was lost through a hospital. She was lost through the Emmy's office, and she's now lost at Hart Island because we don't exactly know where she's buried. But I go there frequently, and I want to thank the Department of Correction for being so um, gentle and kind when we did visit. I met Melinda in 2009, and I've been working with her for the past 10 years to make this day come true. And I just want to thank Melinda. I want to tell my daughter and all of her million friends that are there with her that they now have dignity, and uh, they can now, their families can now tell others that their children and family members are buried in a beautiful park, not under the direction of the penal system. They are now free. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> My name is Herbert Sweat, and I want to salute you because naturally I'm a military man also. The first thing I would like to say to the public and to my mayor and to all the co uh, council people that assisted us in trying to entertain this bill so that we can have not only the honor and the respect of a true cemetery, but to know the history of this island, to understand that in 18 1960, this was a military piece of property where the United States colored troops in 1863 were allowed to become soldiers in the Union Army. This I stand on and to try to fight for the honor of these soldiers to this day, soldiers are being buried there. But we do have a position now where we belong to the organizational friends, which we take the bodies of these soldiers and bury them in a national cemetery. Well, I want to thank you also for opening this piece of land up and giving us this opportunity to have honor and more memorialize them correctly. My daughter also died in eight and 17, excuse me, in 1967 when I was in Vietnam. And they brought me home. She died in St. Albans Naval Hospital. And to this day, they haven't recovered her body yet. But 
I feel beautiful today because this bill by Rodriguez and you, Your Honor, and the rest of your committee has done a beautiful service to humanity. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you to everyone who testified and all the hard work you've done. A few words in Spanish, just a very brief summary. Hoy empezamos a transformar la isla Hart. Todos los New Yorkinos merecen dignidad en la vida y en la muerte. With that, would please join us, everyone who's been a part of this effort as we sign this legislation. So, I'm starting with uh, Idanis's yes, bill. Sir. How many do you want on that? Okay. Five each. Okay. And if you need any more, you'll tell me. Thank you. 